Hey, how's it guys? All right, so in this video, I want to uh, talk about data model in PyQt. All right, so if you want to uh, build a commercial application using PyQt framework, then understand how to work with uh, data model libraries in PyQt5 is a must. All right, so um, here in my uh, Python script, I already uh, pre-insert some of the uh, code blocks. All right, so let's look at the uh, the Python script first. From based on what I have here. So from the import library, here I'm importing the uh, system module. And from the Qt widgets module, I'm importing QAppCation key widget. Uh, for the table widget, I'm going to use QTable view. And here's my layout manager. And from the uh, Qt core module, I'm importing the Qt class. And for the data model, I'll be using QAppStrat table model class. And to locate the data, we'll be using QModelIndex class to uh, perform the work. All right, so here let's go into the uh, main routine. So I created a list, a nest list called data. So this is going to be uh, my data set that I'm going to insert into my uh, table view widget. And here's my uh, application uh, construction instance. All right, so here let me go ahead and uh, run the application. So right now I have a blank window. Now let me go ahead and uh, create my table view widget. Uh, here's the uh, table view widget construction uh, code block. All right, so here I have my uh, table view widget. And let's see, oh, so let me uh, fix the uh, spaces. All right, so here I have an empty uh, table. So there's no data or anything. Now, if we want to uh, insert our data using the data model class, so I want to uh, look at the uh, data set first. All right, so if we look at this list, by looking at it, we know we have uh, three records. So here's record one, two, and three. Now, if I use the lim function to grab the record count based on the uh, data object, and we know this is going to return three. And for the uh, current count, so uh, each record has different uh, size. So for the first record, we have three counts. The second record will have uh, four counts and five counts and so on. And to return the uh, current count, so here we need to uh, use the max function. And based on this function here, I want to return the record that has the longest uh, length size. So in this case, uh, if we use the length function to apply to each tracker and to compare the uh, element size, and this one is going to give us the uh, greatest uh, dimension size. So if we print max data using the length function as the key, this function is going to return uh, this list here. Then I'm going to wrap the output uh, using the length function to give me the uh, Count size. And you will see why uh, these two concepts are very important when you are working with a uh, data model in PyQt. All right, so let me insert notes. Uh, this is going to be row count, and this is going to be column count. All right, so I'll come out uh, these two lines. Now let's go ahead and uh, create our data model. So I'm going to name my uh, data model data model. All right, so I haven't created the data model yet. Now let's go ahead and uh, create our data model using the QAbstract table model class. All right, so here I'm going to uh, create my uh, table model template. And here I'm passing the QAbstract table model uh, class as the parent class. And I named the model table model. So basically just like the name represents this class is going to serve as our uh, table model template. So when you're working with a data model, we have three core functions, row count, 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 and data. So the row count function is going to uh, tell us the data model that how many rows that we'll be inserting. And the count count uh, function is going to tell us the data model, how many counts we're going to uh, insert to our data model. And the data function is going to be used to display the data individually. All right, so by looking at the row count function, 
So uh, based on this function here, we're saying that uh, when we provide the uh, data object or data list, the row count is going to uh, use this link function to determine uh, how many rows we're going to insert to our table. And for the count count, we're going to use this function to uh, pre-insert the counts. Then the uh, data model is going to uh, use the data function to display the values individually based on their uh, location. So here let me come out uh, the try accept block. And let me uh, change this to uh, super. Right, so if we look at the uh, table model again, so this table model class has a parameter called data, and that's basically the uh, data set itself. Inside the constructor, uh, we're creating a variable named underscore data, and it's going to be serve as the uh, data set that we're going to uh, use to uh, populate the table. Now let's go down to the uh, main app class. All right, so here I'm going to create my uh, table model class or table model object. And it should be uh, no underscore. So to assign the data model to our uh, table widget, we can use the set model method. And we'll supply the uh, data model object. So one of the advantages uh, using a data model instead of uh, directly insert our values is when you have uh, multiple data sets that you want to interchangeable to display on a table, it's going to be much easier uh, with a data model approach. First, uh, if I'm going to clear the uh, table and reinsert the data set uh, individually. All right, so if I uh, launch the application, Oh, I've got to provide the uh, data set. All right, so when I launch the application, noticing that under my uh, data function, so this line here is giving me an index error. It's saying that uh, the list index is out range. And that's because when we are inserting a value into our table, because we're saying that uh, our table has five counts, but the first record only has three counts. So therefore, uh, it's still waiting for the fourth and the fifth values to be uh, inserted. So therefore, we need to uh, insert a track set block to handle the index error. And that's where uh, this track set block coming from. So here we can see that if we run into an index here, then we want to insert an empty string as the value. Now, if I launch the uh, application again, and this time we should be able to successfully uh, display the table. And for those empty values, those are being replaced with uh, empty strings. All right, so, uh, Now let's say I want to be able to uh, modify the data in this table. So by default, uh, when you are using a data model to display the value, you only have a read-only access. So if I try to uh, modify the data by double-click my mouse, I won't be able to uh, modify the data. So to be able to modify the data, we need to introduce uh, one more function. And the function is called uh, set data method. So this method takes uh, three parameters. First, the data function takes uh, two parameters. And when the function is examining the signal, it's going to check what type of row the signal uh, represents. So in this case, uh, when we are displaying the data, the if function is checking the signal's uh, row. And if the signal is being used to uh, display the data, then the row value is going to be qt dot display row, and same thing here. We want to check the signal. If the signal is a qt dot add row signal, meaning that we'll be able to uh, modify the data. 
and that's where uh, this if condition coming from. So we're saying that if the row is in uh, display row or edit row, we'll be able to uh, modify the data. Now let me come out this uh, if condition. So we are providing a new value to a cell. We are providing the uh, value location, and here's the uh, new value assignment. Then we need to uh, fire the data change signal, providing the uh, value index. Then we're going to finish the operation by returning the value as true. All right, so now let's see, I said I forgot one thing. Oh, so this one more thing I forgot to do. So even though um, we are providing the this uh, set data function to allow our application to be modifiable. As I mentioned before, the uh, default setting is set to read only. So under the uh, Q abstract uh, data model class or table model class, we have a function called flex. So sync this uh, flex function as a setting. I want to uh, turn on the data is modifiable uh, setting. So here we need to uh, specify that want to enable a flag. And we need to tell the function that uh, which location that want to uh, enable the flag. And followed by using the pipe symbol with the uh, settings uh, value. In this case, it's going to be qt that item is editable uh, value. And once we have enabled this setting, we should now be able to uh, modify the table. And this should be, oh, let me fix the uh, empty spaces. Now we should be able to uh, modify the table. All right, so if I uh, double click on a value, and it's going to allow us to uh, modify the content. But if I cancel the operation by clicking on other uh, cells, notice that here, uh, the value got erased. And that's not the behavior I want. So here we can modify the behavior inside the uh, set data uh, method. So here I can introduce a new uh, validation rule that I can say, if the value is blank, so that's basically uh, checking uh, if the value has value or not. They want to return false to terminate uh, the operation. And once the function is terminated at this point, these two lines will never get executed. Now if I launch the application again, and this time if I try to uh, modify the content, but instead of uh, providing a new value, I'm going to cancel the operation by clicking on other cells. And here, uh, the uh, previous value is now returns back to original value. Now if I uh, assign a new value, and because inside the uh, if function, the value exists, so therefore, this return false statement is going to get uh, skipped and it's going to jump right into uh, these two lines. Then return to to finalize the uh, operation. And that's the basic concept of how to use a data model in your Qt application. All right, so this is going to be able I'm going to cover in this video. And hopefully you guys found this video is for. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.